What is going on, everybody? Greg Ehrenberg here from Odd Shopper. It is time for another Saturday, another MMA card. And guess what? This one kind of sucks, but here's the good news. We've got bets, and, you know, betting really makes anything better because there is nothing I wouldn't watch if I had money on it. I could go to the park right now. I could watch eight-year-olds play baseball, put money on it, have a great afternoon. So that's what's great about this MMA card is even if the fights aren't necessarily the highest profile, we could bet on them, potentially make some money, have some fun sweating them along the way. So like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm about to give out my best bets, but what are yours? Let me know below in the comment section. What do you guys have action on this weekend? Any of the fighters that stand out to you, whether it's a prop, money line, whatever it might be, let me know below in the comment section and we can discuss some of our favorite bets for the weekend. But without further ado, this is what I have my money on for this Saturday's card. For my first bet of the slate, I am siding with Mikhail Ola Shayshuk, minus 115 to win by KO slash TKO. And I mean, this is twofold. Number one, Ola Shayshuk definitely has a lot of power in his hands, but this is also just the fate of Sam Alvey, who I'm not going to be giving you any kind of crazy analysis here that you guys haven't heard elsewhere, but how is this guy still in the UFC? His last win came on June 1st. 2018 against John Volante. So more than four years since we've seen Sam Alvey since winning the Octagon. It's not like there's been time off for him either. He fought one other time in 2018, lost to Little Nog, Rogerio uh, uh, Noguera via KO. That was a fight where, if I remember correctly, he was a significant favorite of really big chocolate. He was really popular on DFS also and got knocked out in the second round of that fight. Then he got finished by Jimmy Crute. He had a loss against Kitson Abreu. That was in 2019. Then 2020, he fought twice. A split decision loss to Ryan Spann. And then a draw against Da Eun Jung. A, a, a fight where he was winning until the third round, where we saw Sam Alvey get dropped, got 10 aided in that round. That was ultimately what led to the split. Uh, then he got subbed by Julian Marquez, dropped and subbed in that fight. He loses a split decision to Wellington Terman. That was also a fight in 2021. So two losses for him that year. And then this year, we saw him early in the year get knocked down and then finish by Brendan Allen. So kind of a sub and club in that fight. So there was a point in time where there was a couple of things, well, a few things we really knew about Sam Alvey. Uh, the first and foremost was his fights never really high pace. That hasn't that hasn't changed. Although I do think Ola Shayshak is going to push the pace. It's the only way he knows how to fight. So Sam Alvey, there's a point in time, slow paced fights, really good takedown defense, and had a really good chin. And here's what's changed over time. He still has good takedown defense. He still fights at a slow pace, but I don't know that the chin is there anymore. Like I said, he just got dropped by Brendan Allen earlier in the year. He had the fight against Wellington Terman. He lost, didn't get dropped in that fight, but he got dropped against Julian Marquez, dropped against Da Eun Jung. So he's gotten dropped now in three of his last four fights. And overall, like we said, we're talking about all those losses. Been four years plus since he won. He's gotten eight fights in a row without winning in the interim. And it, not that Sam Alvey was ever a high-level fighter, but the things that made him serviceable at the UFC level, primarily his ability to take damage and an extraordinary chin, I just don't think that exists anymore. And you look at a fighter in, in, uh, in Ola Shayshak who... Is a power puncher. We've seen him land knockdowns in a ton of fights. We talked about the last time that that Sam Alvey won a fight was against John Volante. Well, Ola Shayshuk, he finished John Volante in the first round. He fought Ante Gulov. That was in 2019. Knocked him down three times. Most recently fought against Justin Jacoby. That was a fairly competitive fight that he ended up losing decision. Fight before that, though, he knocked out uh, Shamil Gamzatov in the first round. So a lot of power in the hands of Ola Shayshuk. What I think the most likely outcome here, he's going to move forward. He's probably going to be throwing two, three strikes for every one punch that Sam Alvey throws. And just given the limited durability we've seen out of Sam Alvey and how his chin has deteriorated as of late, I think he's going to get clipped. I think he's going to get dropped. I think he's going to get finished. So Ola Shechuk, minus 115. That's my bet in this fight. Today's show is sponsored by BetMGM. And if you guys want to know the best opportunities to make money in the betting space, it's taking advantage of sign-up offers from any kind of books that are looking to get you in the door at their site. And what we have right here from BetMGM is they're going to give you a risk-free bet of up to $1,000 on the first bet you place with them. All you have to do is sign up using the promo code OSMMA or sign up using the link in the description box below. And if your first bet at BetMGM loses, they're going to refund it with a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Really good opportunity to go in Place a bet doesn't have to be $1,000, whatever you're comfortable with, but up to $1,000. You place a $50 bet, $100, $1,000 bet. 
And if that first bet doesn't win, you're going to get refunded in the form of a free bet. So take a swing, really good plus EV value on here. This is one of the best ways to make money in the sports betting industry is taking advantage of these signup offers. And they're not going to exist forever. We've already seen a couple of different betting uh, uh di different kinds of sponsors and different offers that have come and gone on the different shows we've done here so take advantage of the offers while they exist sign up at betmgm using the promo code osmma osmma or sign up using that link in the description box below for my next bet for this weekend's card i'm looking at takashi sato plus 220 against brian battle and more than anything, I'm looking to fade some of these fighters coming off tough. There was a point in time where the ultimate fighter, it was an excellent vehicle for the UFC in, in a couple of ways. There's a there's a case to be made, and Dana White's made it, that the UFC maybe wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for the ultimate fighter. It's something that saved them at one point in time, the first season. It was when uh, reality TV was becoming massively big. It was really big in pop culture. The UFC was struggling at the time. It helped them get on TV and really helped them get in the public eye. But what's happened over the course of time is just the 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 Ultimate Fighter. We've also seen other series like the like the Contender series, where there's just so many alternate ways to get into the UFC that I just don't think the talent level on the Ultimate Fighter is all that high anymore. And we've seen that play out in a lot of recent fights. So Brian Battle was a winner of the Ultimate Fighter. He beat Trey Sean Gore unanimous decision. It was a pretty clear win. But since then, we've seen Treshawn Gore fight again. He fought against Cody Brundage in his last fight. He was a popular pick in that fight. He was a, a sizable favorite. And there was a lot of mind, line movement towards Treshawn Gore. And what happened? He looked terrible. He got taken down by Brundage early in the fight. And then the, the common wisdom there was that, all right, well, Treshawn Gore is going to have a power and he's going to have a striking advantage. And that just didn't end up being the case. There was a lot more output on the Brundage side. And the first thing that Brundage landed clean, it put Treshawn Gore on his ass. And then he ultimately finished him and knocked him out clean. And that's not the only time we've seen that with recent Ultimate Fighter winners. Look, look at somebody like Ronnie Turkios, who also fought on that same card as Treshawn Gore. He was a big favorite in his fight. And he was a guy who, when we saw him on the Ultimate Fighter, he fought at a really high pace. There was a lot of output on his side. And he just looked like a different fighter going up against a higher level of competition where uh, I'm trying to pull up the stats right here to try to remember what his actual output looked like. But I'm pretty sure Turkios landed something like 30 significant strikes or, or maybe even less than that in his first actual UFC fight where he was fighting somebody who wasn't from the contender series and or, or from the ultimate fighter. And what happens, it's just the big step up in competition against actual UFC caliber fighters that it just makes a difference for some of these guys from the ultimate fighter that aren't used to fighting that level of competition. So they might look good on the reality TV show. And then you see them against better competition and they just don't look nearly as good because the reality is the guys they're fighting on tough are not that great of opponents. So if you look at the metrics of the fight between Brian Battle and Takashi Sato, you just think there's a massive output advantage on the side of Brian Battle. He lands 7.1 significant strikes to 2.28 for Takashi Sato. And in in theory, that could be true. But just based on how poor these, these Ultimate Fighter fighters have looked coming into the UFC as of late, I just don't know that any of them warrant being this big of a favorite. So while the numbers do indicate battle should be favored, like we've seen like in Ricky Turkios' fight against a hobby that just wasn't the case. It wasn't the case in Treshawn Gore's fight, his last time out against Cody Brundage. So we're getting Takashi Sato at plus 220 odds. This is a veteran. He's been in the UFC for a while. He's now had uh, five fights in the UFC. He's won a couple of them. He's had a couple of finishes over Jason Witt and Ben Saunders. Not the Ben Saunders win is all that impressive, but but still, I think the experience of Takashi Sato makes me think at the very least this should be an even money fight. We're getting plus 220 odds on it. He's a significant underdog. So I'm backing the dog here in Takashi Sato, plus 220. For my final bet of the slate, I'm looking at another big underdog, Augusto Sakai, plus 220 against Sergey Spivak. Now, there are some concerns about the matchup here, mostly because if you look at the fight that Sakai had against Alistair Overeem, Overeem was able to take him down three times. And Sakai's takedown defense looked pretty crappy in that fight. It's not like these were great takedown attempts. 
by Alistair over and he basically football tackled him in the middle of the octagon was just able to drag him to the ground so that is a little bit concerning and then the subsequent losses for Augusto Sakai he got knocked out by Jairzinho Rosenstrike he obviously has massive power and they also got knocked out by Tai Tuivasa we saw Derek Lewis recently get knocked out by Tai Tuivasa that could happen to anybody and I do think Sakai is a heavyweight who has a little bit more ability than he's shown in his last few fights also keep in mind that fight against Overeem he was winning it until Overeem realized that he could just kind of take him down at will. But there's still pretty high output from Sakai. He lands over five significant strikes per minute while only absorbing around four. So I think there's a pretty big significant striking advantage that he has over Sergey Spivak. Now, obviously, there is a path to victory for Spivak where you just take him down a la what Alistair Overeem did against Sakai. But I don't know that that happens like two out of three or three out of four times these guys fight. So that's why I do think there's value on the plus 220 side for Augusto Sakai, because as long as the fight takes place to defeat, I do think he's live to knock out Sergey Spivak. And I do think he has pretty significant striking advantages. And we've seen Spivak hurt and finished on the feet more than once in the UFC. Walt 